Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hands on Mac. Today, we continue on the road to Big Sur. Compatibility issues you need to know about. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. Well, we're going to do a series on the road to Big Sur Apple's Mac OS 11. I don't have enough fingers. One more. Add one more. Maybe my nose. 11. This is a big jump. There are a lot of new features in Mac OS 11, chiefly support for the new Apple Silicon chips. Now, I know you probably don't have that yet, depending on where you're, when you're watching this episode, but they're coming, and uh, that's the big reason for Big Sur. But there's a lot of other things that make Big Sur uh, special. So last episode, we talked about the process I'm going through. I would like to, this time... And I think it's worth doing this every few years. Do a clean install. So uh, some of what I'm talking about on this Road to Big Sur series is, you know, what you need to do to do a clean install. Um, I created, as you may remember last week, a external drive that's my data drive that my home directory lives on so that I can, with impunity, without worrying about anything, wipe the internal drive on my computer, whether it's a MacBook or an iMac or even a Mac Pro, wipe the internal drive, replace it with a brand new fresh copy of Big Sur, and my data will be untouched. Uh, but you certainly don't have to do that to upgrade. You don't even have to do a clean install. You can just install in place with Big Sur. Um, that's just what I'm going to do. What we'll do in the next few episodes is talk more about the things everybody has to consider before upgrading. Now, I should say, as I'm recording this, Big Sur is still out in developer preview, but not yet out officially. Apple hasn't really told us when Big Sur is going to be released. I have to think it's sometime soon. Maybe it's already been released by the time this show is released. I have no way of knowing that ahead of time. Uh, nevertheless, as with any major system upgrade, it's probably prudent to wait a little while. You don't want to be the first one on your block to install Big Sur. My friend Alex Lindsay says, and I think he's probably right, you should never install the first version of an operating system. You shouldn't even install the update to that first version. But in fact, you should wait for the update to the update that fixes the bugs that the update to the first version introduced. So even though we're calling this Mac OS 11, Apple is still technically calling it Mac OS 10.16. Uh, you would probably want to wait not till 10.16.01, <laughs> but 10.16.02, <laughs> the release that fixes the release that fixed the initial bugs. That's if you really want to be prudent. I don't know if I'm going to have uh, that kind of patience. Lots of new features in uh, Mac OS Big Sur. Uh, according to Apple, besides the fact that it'll support Apple Silicon, and of course it'll continue to support our Intel, our existing Intel Macs, uh, updates will be faster once Big Sur is installed. Software updates on the Mac will now begin in the background and complete faster than before. That's a really good thing. The menu bar is a little taller. There's a lot of cosmetic changes, a little more translucent. I don't know if you're going to care that much. The dock is... Apple says, floating, lifted from the bottom of your display. It's more translucent. Your desktop wallpaper can shine through. Mostly, people will notice there are all new app icons. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about these in the developer preview. Some people hate them. Some people love them. Apple has been modifying them uh, with each new release in the developer preview. So clearly, they're listening to feedback, or maybe they just didn't get around to polishing them. I like the new look. It's a, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more modern, but it's not consequential. It's not a feature that you've got to have. Notification Center is redesigned. All your notifications and widgets will be in that single dedicated column on the right notifications will automatically be sorted by most recent. And the Today widget has new information in it. There's um, new and updated system sounds. There's a new control center. The biggest changes are changes that are going to affect compatibility. And that's what this episode's all about. How to make sure that what you're running today will run on 
Big Sur. The biggest change is the way kernel extensions are handled. We'll get into that in a little bit. They're also going to cryptically, cryptographically sign the system volume. This is something that uh, has been done before. Chromebooks do it. Uh, some Windows installs do it. Uh, Windows hardware does it. The idea is, at least if you cryptographically sign the, sign the bootloader, you prevent uh, rogue operating systems from installing themselves. Um, it also means, in the case of the Mac, they're going to sign the entire system volume. It also means your Mac will know exactly the layout of your system volume, and that's one of the features that will allow these updates to proceed in the background. Your system volume can't be modified easily. Safari is going to get a new extension system that I think, I hope, will allow us once again to have the ad blockers like uBlock Origin that just didn't work on Safari. Uh, I've talked a lot about the new Safari 14 two episodes ago. I think it's really nice. Um, there'll be more privacy information when you install apps from the App Store. It's kind of like iOS 14 as well. Uh, Apple's really doubling down on privacy. They do ask developers to self-report their app privacy practices in the App Store. But self-report is a double-edged sword. It means if they don't, you won't necessarily know everything they're doing. Apple isn't yet compelling that. This is usually, this is kind of how Apple works. It starts by recommending it and then later compels it. So some big changes to Big Sur, but there are a couple that you're going to want to be prepared for. Of course, with Catalina, uh, we lost access to 32-bit apps. That's still going to be the case, of course, with Big Sur. If you already upgraded to Catalina, you've gone through this process. But I should warn people who are skipping ahead you know they're not they're skipping catalina and going right from mojave or an earlier version prepare yourself you should check to see which 32-bit apps you have they will not run on big sur they wouldn't run on catalina and they won't run on big sur so you're going to lose those apps the good news is developers have had a year to prepare for this uh if they don't update and some have decided not to they're just not going to work on the Mac going forward. There's an even bigger change in store that I think is very important. It makes a big difference in security, and it has to do with kernel extensions. You've probably, the last time you logged in or used your Mac, if you're using Catalina, seen this dialogue, legacy system extension. Existing software on your system loaded a system extension signed by, and then it's whatever app, installed it, which will be incompatible with a future version of Mac OS. We're not quite there yet, but Apple is definitely deprecating the old KEXT extension. And developers who want to install system extensions on uh, the newest Mac OS, Big Sur, have to jump through a lot of hoops. So it probably is a good idea to check for system extensions that aren't going to work. For instance, I'm getting this pop-up with the uh, Dropbox system extension. Uh, I have another cloud provider, pCloud. I also get this. Presumably, by the time Big Sur comes out, they'll have fixed this problem, but that's something to be aware of. Um, let me push over and show you which Macs will work with it. That's another issue. Not all Macs will. In fact, they're leaving quite a few older Macs behind, so you will want to check you won't be able to install Big Sur on a MacBook before 2015, on a MacBook Pro before 2013, an iMac before 2014, MacBook Air 2013, Mac Mini 2014, and the iMac Pro, uh, which came out in 2017. So all models of the iMac Pro will be compatible. I'm installing it on iMac Pro. Uh, and a MacBook Air, both of which will be compatible. But you might want to check that list. There's a program I recommend uh, that is not well known, but I think will be very useful in this. It's a French program called Etre Check, E-T-R-E -E Check. And it lets you run a system check on your computer and look for a variety of problems. It's kind of like about this Mac on steroids. Now, as with many programs... Uh, starting you know, with Gatekeeper on Catalina, uh, to access the hard drive, they have to be given permission. So I'm going to go into the, my system settings, and I'm going to add uh, Etra check after first unlocking, because 
you can you can turn this feature off, but I recommend that you require a administrator password before you can modify settings here. I'm going to in the privacy section give full disk access to EtraCheck Pro. That is important because it's it's what EtraCheck Pro needs to do what it's about to do. Uh, let me show you. I'm going to start EtraCheck and let it run because it does take a little bit of a, a time to run that first check. And the way I'm going to run it, by the way, uh, is I'm going to say I'm not looking for a specific problem. I'm just checking. I've already given it full drive access, and now I'm going to start it. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to let it run. And while I let it run, I, I should show you, you already have some information. If you go into the Apple and about this Mac, you've seen this before. This is all about your Macintosh and you get a system report. This is an additional button on the About This Mac dialog. And the system report does have some information about uh, extensions, which extensions are installed. And it also has, under the Legacy Software tab, information about 32-bit apps. So you might want to check there. That's Apple's own information. It's not as complete, frankly, as EtraCheck. Uh, EtraCheck is free. The professional version is $18 and can be installed on up to six Macintoshes. I bought it because I find it very useful. Uh, it's a program I wasn't familiar with until I started to do the research on this particular uh, upgrade. And I, and I realized that a third-party tool that will tell me about out-of-date uh, apps and extensions would be very, very helpful. EtraCheck is still running. So this is the part of the show where I ask our fine editors, Kevin to speed things up. So our EtraCheck Pro report is almost done. And it's going to help us with kernels, kernel extensions. The, the, the reason kernel extensions are being uh, changed by Apple is it's really a, a powerful tool that malware can use to kind of permanently change how your Mac works. Uh, so that's definitely, definitely something that you, you, know, you want to be careful with. A lot of programs use kernel extensions. I'm always nervous when I see a program want to modify my uh, kernel and by adding extensions. Uh, so you want to make sure they're very trusted before you give them permission. And from now on, Apple is going to make it possible to install kernel extensions, but it will always be a separate install. It won't be part of the full install, and it's going to have a lot more cautions in it. So. Uh, I think Apple's putting up speed bumps. I think effectively they're saying we're eliminating these. They have been deprecated, and we're going to eliminate these at some point. Let's see what the EtraCheck has to say. There are a few unsigned programs that could be adware. That's a, a good thing to review. Uh, the Homebrew script, my Emacs, plist. You know, most of these things you'll recognize. Um, this is a program I wrote, so of course it's it's not signed. Uh, there's some plugins. The LastPass plugin. The WebEx plugin. This is very common, by the way. Programs like Zoom and uh, Cisco's WebEx often install low-level kernel extensions. That's a good thing to know about. So this is a useful security check. I'm not going to worry about anything uh, there. Let's look at software, though. So you see, I do have some 32-bit apps. A, a couple of these are old uh, e-books that were made to be apps. That's silly. I don't know what WineStable is. And a cloud station I, uh, I no longer use. So those are old programs. They're still on my system, even though I'm running Catalina. Of course, if I were to run them, nothing, you know, it would not uh, run. It's possible to open it up in the Finder and delete these. Maybe that's a good time to do it. You see what Apple's done. It, it, in fact, they would do this in the, uh, in the system report under the uh, About This Mac. They put a big no uh, sign over the icon. I can get rid of that. I'm not going to use that ever again. And it won't run even if I did. Same thing with this book. I'll delete that. And let's delete this. I guess I have two copies of it. Yeah. Probably better to just delete those. Uh, I see one of the copies was in my Dropbox. I don't know what wine stable is. But again, this is something that's not going to run. And uh, this one is in my applications folder, so it needs me to sign in with my administrator password to delete that. But those are all deleted. That's good. Now, here's the thing we really care about is kernel extensions. Keybase was purchased by Zoom. I no longer use Keybase. But you could see that their Fuse extension, which is a file system extension, is still in my system. That means it, it would normally run, although it is not loading. 
I'm going to I'm going to delete that cuz that is potentially it's not a program I use anymore. Oh, it's you see it's open. And there you go. So I, I could go up here and, and probably find Keybase. There it is. Uh, I could quit it. Let's quit it. And then I'll be able to delete it. So that's actually very useful. I didn't even know I was running that. I stopped using it when they were purchased by Zoom, and yet it was still on my system. So that's all going to be deleted. Uh, the Samsung USB driver. Here's another one. Samsung uh, sells these external hard drives the uh, I think the T series of hard drives and it has encryption and installs a kernel extension for the encryption. I hate that. You don't want to delete this if you know you're still using the encryption on that external hard drive. I know I'm not. I hated that idea and so I stripped it off the Samsung drive. But you can see when I first started using it, I did install it. That is that is exactly why Apple is doing this. That really isn't an appropriate uh, use of kernel extensions, and it is rife for problems. Here's some system launch agents. There's quite a few of these. I might want to go through these. These are all things that get loaded. You see how useful EtraCheck is? These are all things I'm going to want to check before I install Big Sur. Now, I'm doing a clean install, so all of them will be gone. That's one of the reasons I'm doing a clean install. But I'm showing this to those of you who are not doing a clean install, we're going to be installing on top of an existing Catalina install. These are all things you probably want to check and remove, especially if there are going to be compatibility issues. Uh, EtraCheck does a lot of other things, performance measuring, and it does a full report. This is, I think, worth the $18. But the two most important things it does, you can see right there, are 32-bit applications. Those won't run at all. They won't run on Catalina, and they won't run on Big Sur. And most importantly, we want to do these kernel extension checks because that is going to be a problem going forward with Big Sur. Uh, so we've checked compatibility. We've made sure that Big Sur will run on our machine. Uh, we've gone through uh, possibly incompatible apps and uh, kernel extensions, removed those or found replacements. That's probably what you'd want to do if it's a program you continue to use. And if there is no replacement... Uh, for instance, Dropbox has now put out a 64-bit uh, Dropbox uh, extension, so you know there is a replacement. But if there is no replacement, um, actually, no, it's not 3264-bit. The Dropbox extension was a KX, so they put out something that's more compatible with Big Sur. I expect the big companies will have done that before Big Sur arrives. But if not, you're really going to want to check and see if there's an update. Um, all right, compatibility is done. There's a couple more steps we want to take. I'm being excessively prudent here, but when you install a big system upgrade, as Big Sur is, uh, it's probably a good idea to be prudent. It's also useful to kind of know about all of these ins and outs because they're just handy tools to have as Macintosh users. As I said, I'm not going to worry so much because I'm wiping the drive. Next week, we're going to talk about backing up, something you must do before any install, because there's always the risk you'll delete your data. So we'll talk all about that next week on Hands on Mac. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time on Hands on Mac. Want more Twit? Well, check out Smart Tech Today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech tech, it's automation, it's connected devices, it's smart home, it's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news, we get the latest devices, we do reviews, everything. You gotta check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech Today.